G'day guys, Ronnie Dahl, Four Wheeling Australia. Hey, we all make mistakes when we're off-roading, so this video is all about the common mistakes that mainly beginners do, but we also make when we're out off-roading. So check it out, and let's get into it. The number one thing from my experience, and from a lot of other people as well, is that we see people that don't air down. Now, if you don't air down, things happen, and we'll get to that. But it's not something you learn in school, unless you do a full drive training course, but then you've been to full drive school, right? So for those who don't know, when it comes to tires, we lower them to increase the footprint, not the width of the footprint, but the length of the footprint. This helps you keep flotation on sand, which means you don't get bogged as often. It also preserves the track, and it also prevents tire damage, because when you're driving over sticks like this and rocks like that, the tire will deform around it rather than try and, and keep its shape because there's so much air in it and then it'll force possibly a sharp rock or a stick straight through it and then you have a puncture. In terms of tire pressure, I've done an entire video discussing each tire pressure you should use on each different terrain. But to quickly cover it with what I use, 40 psi on highway, 18 on sand, maybe even lower than that. And on gravel roads, I'll go down to 25 or maybe 30. It just all depends on the situation, but an entire video just on that. So if you have a mate or yourself, you want to know about that, there's a link down below. Possibly the biggest one of all, well, actually, I'll pick it as the biggest one of all, driving too hard. And not just the, you know, beginners, also the experienced people. So for example, your mate's holding your iPhone or whatever phone you got, and he's filming you driving up a gnarly hill, and you're just giving it, hashtag send it. Hashtag send it to the workshop, because if you're giving it too much, throttle at the wrong time, wheels come down, hit the ground, boom, there goes your CV, or possibly something else like your drive, anything in drive line really, drive shaft, whatever. But it's not just that, it's also what we're standing on right now. Track damage. If we drive too hard, and it's not necessary to drive hard, then we are going to damage the track. So if you have lockers and other things that can assist you in getting through something, use those methods rather than just unlocked, just giving it all you got. Because all you're doing is, you're possibly gonna damage your vehicle and you're gonna damage the track. But wait, there's more. A classic one is the old river crossing. So I've got the bonnet or hood open so I can help explain exactly what can happen to your vehicle. If you drive too hard into a deep water puddle or a river crossing, it's not necessarily what happens on the front. You want to go and slow so you can create a bow wave. Now, I need to deep dive into a specific water crossing video, one to come, but what can happen is when you go too hard into a deep puddle, deep water hole or a river crossing, you can force the water underneath the vehicle up through here and it can force itself into places where you don't want water to go in the first place or commonly the water then comes back this way and then hits the fan blade and pushing the fan blades into your radiator or possibly doing that. On well, some vehicles it's more prone than other vehicles. But what I have seen happen before is a fan blade snapping off because RPMs are high, you're going too hard and then one fan blade snaps off and your engine is vibrating like mad. That fan blade, believe it or not, being plastic and it's quite light, it actually balances the whole engine. It's, it's, very, it's a balanced thing. One blade missing, you'll be surprised how much your engine will shake. You'll think there's something else going on, but in fact, if you've gone through that water too hard, it could just be your fan blade has snapped off. And down here is a chassis. And the chassis on your vehicle and the diffs on your vehicle, that's where you don't want touching the sand. So if when you're driving too hard on flat, soft sand beach and you start sinking, stop. Don't smash that throttle because all you're going to do is dig your way to China. Hard rock, hard ground, you don't want to be driving too hard there either. In fact, if you have lockers, I'll class that as driving too hard. If you've got your lockers on permanently and you're driving around turning on hard rock, like solid ground where you don't need lockers for traction, you're binding everything up and something's going to go bang. So don't drive too hard on solid surfaces, especially rock, because it's like driving on pavement. Uh -oh. The one that worries me the most, people not being prepared. This is mainly a beginner thing because if you have been into four wheeling for a while, you would have got stuck at some stage. This is what some would call an overkill extensive recovery kit. And yes, this is overkill because 
if you're just getting into four-wheeling, you don't need all this stuff. I mean, I have two winches. That's overkill for a start. Um, even having a winch is overkill for a beginner for a start because you need to know how to use it. If you don't know how to use your recovery gear, you got to learn that before you actually go and get it. And then you know if you need it. So in here, all you really need is a snatch strap, rear recovery point, front recovery points, not your tie down points, the recovery points, and you're pretty well set to go. But without that, you're kind of up crap creek. Shovel and a spade. Now I've done a video on 10 things you must have when you go four wheeling. I would highly suggest you check that one out. It's quite a popular one as well because it gives you a lot of detail of what you need. Now not being prepared also includes not having a first aid kit, not having a snake bite kit if you're going to an area where there's a lot of snakes. And also knowing how to use them. First aid course doesn't cost much and it's a, you know, could save your life and you can use that anyway. It's not just off-road you use a, a first aid course. Basic tools. You don't need all the tools that I have in here, but you do need some form of a jack to jack your vehicle up. And you need a couple of spare things and a couple of cable ties, you know, just your general screwdrivers and spanners, just a small toolkit so you can get yourself out of the doo-doo. We cover recovery gear, we cover recovery points, we cover tools, but there's also water, sufficient water. Now food isn't such a big thing. It takes about 30 days before you can get scurvies and you can get permanent damage from not eating food. It's not gonna be pleasant, but you can survive. Water, however, you can't go without water for more than three days. You're pretty much cactus. But last but not least, know how to use your four wheel drive. I have manual locking hubs, which means I have to lock the outside, I've got to lock the inside as well for this to become a four-wheel drive. The reason why I'm bringing up such a, such a simple fact is that it's not a simple fact. If you're not a four-wheel driver and you're just getting into it, how would you even know this unless you read your user manual? Not everyone does that. I've done a video just on how to know your four-wheel drive, so that's down below as well, going extensively into this. Have you ever heard the term buy once cry once that's usually said with uh, quality gear that you spend a lot more money on now there is such a thing as good cheap gear but it all depends on what it is you're actually buying so it's hard to clarify and i need to do a whole topic on this and there will be one coming up all i'll say is be careful when you buy full drive gear for your vehicle so if you're a beginner and you don't know much about full driving do a lot of research and trust no one Next one is lack of respect for the bush. And it's not just about rubbish. If we all carry bags with us and we see a couple of things lying around camp or our lunch spot or wherever we are, maybe, you know, you're holding your iPhone and filming your mate drive up a hill, you see a can of Coke or a can of wild turkey that's been left behind by someone else, just pick it up, make you feel better. And everyone else who uses the track will appreciate the bush much more as well. Because I find that if, if there's a lot of rubbish lying around, the young people, generally males, will find that that's the norm. We just throw our crap around in the bush. Also, ladies, when you, when you do go to, you know, to the bush to do a number one, just bring your paper back and put it in the bin. Don't just leave it out in the bush. All right, ladies and gents, here are some do's and don'ts for those who are new to full driving and four wheeling and getting out in the bush. And if you have some mates who are just getting into it, this is some important information for them. And the purpose of this is to keep the freedom that we have out here. Now, freedom when you go off road doesn't mean that you can just do whatever the hell you want. You can make your own tracks. You can, you can do anything that you like. It's not really down to that. Freedom means you get to get off the bitumen and you get to explore the beautiful country we have and check out all the tracks we got. Now, some places it's tolerated to, you know, go a bit hard and go up rutted hills and all that kind of stuff. But most places, you gotta treat the bush with respect because there are many different road users and as soon as we start seeing tracks getting cut up, they'll get graded or the place will get shut. So here are a number of things that you shouldn't be doing. Number one, when you hit the dirt, put it in four wheel drive. I am really sick of hearing people going, oh, I can do that track in two wheel drive. Yeah, I'm sure you can, but use four wheel drive because then you're not gonna cut up the track for everyone else. Number two, 
putting it in two-wheel drive and doing donuts on the beach. For what purpose? You're on public land. On private land, yeah, do whatever you like. And definitely don't post it on social media because what you are essentially doing is you post that video up, you're just creating a mentality that people can just do whatever the hell they want in the bush. And this also flows into the rubbish issue we have. So that is probably one of the most important things you need to consider when you go four-wheel driving. Next one is not having the correct vehicle for the task. An all-wheel drive, AWD, is not a four-wheel drive, 4WD. The difference is the A and the 4. There is a massive critical difference on those two. So to explain that in depth, I'm going to make a video later, but all I'm saying here is a four-wheel drive generally has a locked differential in the middle where the transfer case is, and then it'll lock 50% drive to the front, 50% drive to the rear. Whereas an all-wheel drive will just send drive to wherever it wants to. They're not made for off-road use. They're made for gravel roads, really good on gravel roads, but they're not good for the beach. They're not good for most four-wheeling, most four-by-fouring. They're not good for that. That is something that needs to be brought up and addressed because we find many vehicles out there that get stuck. Now, of course, if you're a really good driver, you can probably get away with it. So I'm not denying that, but we've pulled many all-wheel drives out in the past deep down onto the beach you know it's when you stop that's when you're in trouble you can't stop in these vehicles this is mainly sand we've actually pulled these people out now don't get me wrong it's not to say you can't go touring and four-wheel driving in an all-wheel drive you're just restricted to gravel roads pretty much and stuff where there's not too many divots holes bumps water crossings all that kind of stuff if you want to go proper four driving you need a four by four four wheel drive vehicle a stock vehicle on stock tires is not going to fare well on Australian bush tracks. Definitely not. Your tires will get slashed on specific tracks. For example, the Holland track, which is actually a pretty mild track, you will slash your tires. Guarantee it, if you've got highway tires on there. Welcome to Four Wheeling Studios. More about this in a different video. So let's not get sidetracked here. A common mistake. People expecting too much from their vehicle or have the wrong vehicle for the wrong application. For example, a Suzuki Jimny sucks at towing. Okay, and so does a short wheelbase Jeep, and so does a short wheelbase anything really. They're not meant for towing. They are terrible at towing, but they are absolutely awesome at tight little nimble tracks, getting around and going over pretty hardcore obstacles, even with mild modifications. But then we take the flip side, then you have the big American pickup trucks, you have the Silverado, you have the F250, and you have the Ram. These vehicles are superb towers, they can tow so much, capacity is huge, but they are not built for tight little tracks. They're not built for the four wheeling that we know in Australia. However, if you do spend a lot of coin on them, you could modify them to the point where they could manage it, but they're never gonna be as good as the mid-range. So when I say mid-range, I'm talking Nissan Patrol, I'm talking Toyota Land Cruiser, uh, Land Rover Defenders, you know, anything Land Rover pretty much, you got your dual cab utes, you got all these other vehicles. Those vehicles in the middle that we all consider the bases of four wheel drive in Australia, those are the vehicles you should be looking at if you're looking at getting into four wheeling. Unless of course you're a car enthusiast, you're a car nut, you want to make this vehicle be able to do that, I totally get that. But for everyone else out there, if you're looking at getting into four wheeling, make sure you get the correct vehicle before you start, before you get into it. You don't want a short wheelbase jeep and take your whole family out and tow a van you want a mid-range vehicle to a big vehicle to tow the van to take yourself out and do some touring but if you're a weekend warrior and you just want to have you know fun play around then you don't want a big vehicle you probably don't even want a big dual cab you want something small and nimble so consider before you buy anything and also consider before you modify your vehicle to be able to do what it's not supposed to do because you possibly could have sold that vehicle and bought another vehicle that's already built for that purpose and you would have saved money. This is a classic one. Trying the same thing over and over, yet expecting a different result. So what you actually need to do is stop what you're doing, get out and perhaps actually look at the track and then suss out what you need to do because one, do you have to go that way? Two, is it worth it? Three, what's actually stopping you? Four, can you let more air out of your tires? 
That's a classic one, especially with sand dunes. I'll see people just keep trying to dune over and over and over, getting really frustrated because the rest of the convoy made it up. And people have been suggesting lowering their tires, but I don't do it. And then when they finally do lower their tires, they get up and everyone does a big cheer. Just do it straight away. Then you won't be that last guy. But there's also simple ones. You could do what you're doing slower, or you could do it faster. But can you do it faster? These are the things you need to check out. Just really get out and really assess the actual situation of what you're about to do. And prepare yourself as well. Accept the fact that sometimes you may just need assistance or your vehicle can't do what another vehicle could do. So don't try the same thing over and over because you're just gonna end up getting frustrated, possibly breaking something and looking like a fool. Righto, so which were the most classic mistakes that you commonly see out there and which is the worst mistake that you see people doing? And which do you make? It's fine to make mistakes. We don't know how to full drive. We don't learn our stuff in high school or primary school or whatever it is. It's not something we're brought up with. It's something you've got to learn as you go. Speaking of learning, if you want to know more, there are video links down below. Deep diving into how to figure out your full drive and tire pressures, all that stuff. Check it out. See you guys.